Hey there, Jerry. Uh, Dr. Jerry Coyne. I did a more thorough critique of your lecture, Why Evolution is True, uh, in several videos, I think four altogether, that I titled, Why Evolution is True, a Critique. Why Evolution is True, then a colon, excuse me, a critique. And in that I critique your video that I'm responding to now uh, in more, excuse me, in more detail. Uh, but I'll just do a short one video response uh, here. I guess my main point of criticism is that there is a big difference between naturalism on the one hand and natural science on the other. I've got no beef with science as a religious person. If there is good evidence for evolution, and it seems that you've given good evidence for evolution in your lecture, uh, then fine. That is well and good. Uh, but there is no possible way to go from that, from evidence for evolution, to the claim that God does not exist. At least there is no way uh, to do that that you have presented in your talk. Faith is a cultural intellectual cancer, you say, which people need to have educated out of them. If only people would be taught how to think for themselves and use reason and accept the findings of science, then we'd all be enlightened neo-Darwinian atheists. But this assertion on your part is simply false. Uh, uh, faith is based on solid reason and, e and evidence. Um, and, and also it's logically possible that there is that there is a God and that he used evolution to design life. It may appear prima facie, prima facie that an all-powerful and a loving God would not choose that particular method of design, but the problem of evil faced religious people long before Darwin came along. We obviously think we have a good answer to the problem of evil, else we would not continue believing in God. But if the problem of evil in general uh, why do good people suffer, for example? If that's not fatal to our faith, uh, the, the faith of we religious people, uh, then the problem of evil as applied to theistic evolution, uh, uh, you know, there are bad designs, uh, animals die and suffer for thousands of years as they evolve and, and so on. Um, the, the problem of evil applied to theistic evolution uh, wouldn't be a problem either. So, so whether evolution is a fact or not, uh, there is suffering and evil in the world, and that's something we have to deal with. Um, so, uh, if we apply that to theistic evolution, uh, that shouldn't be a problem if it's not a problem um, for us in other contexts. Now, I appreciate the fact that you were addressing an audience of your fellow skeptics, so it was appropriate to assume that they would be sympathetic to your religious doubts. However, science or evolution is totally irrelevant when considering the question of the existence of God, or almost totally irrelevant. And I'm not sure you are cognizant of that fact. The truth of religion and the truth of science are two totally different things, or the falsehood of religion and the falsehood of science. The truth or falsehood of religion and of science are two totally different things. This is not to say that there must be no overlap between the two. It is certainly possible in principle to argue either for or against the existence of God using science. But the mere fact that life evolved is in and of itself powerless to establish atheism. And if evolution is all you've got to establish your atheistic worldview, then that view is unjustified. Perhaps you ought to consider, uh, since your atheism is unjustified, if evolution is all you have to support it, then perhaps you ought to consider all the evidence in favor of the existence of God. The evidence for God is at least as strong as the evidence for evolution. For example, the God hypothesis makes predictions slash uh, retrodictions. Uh, uh, for, for example, the prediction that uh, God may create the cosmos uh, if he exists, uh, but if there is no God, then there is no creator and hence no creation. 
so the God hypothesis makes a prediction of the cre of the world being created, of the universe being created, and it has been so clearly verified empirically by scientists that the world, the universe, exists. But the existence of the universe confirms the God hypothesis. Uh, again, no creator, no creation. There is a creation, so there must be a creator. Uh, so the evidence for a divine being is so strong that only an obscene person uh, would deny the conclusion uh, to use uh, yours and uh, uh, apparently Stephen Jay Gould's uh, definition of fact. So, uh, in, in conclusion, in, in summary, theistic evolution uh, could have occurred, so evolution does not prove there is no God. And that seems to be part of what you're saying in your talk, so that is uh, an incorrect uh, claim uh, on your part if you are, in fact, uh, making that claim. And... Uh, the God Hypothesis makes the prediction of the universe which has been confirmed by science. Alright, um, well thank you and uh, feel free to uh, respond to this if you so wish. Um, if you have a YouTube, I'm not sure if you have a YouTube account uh, yourself but uh, perhaps uh, you do and if so you can certainly respond uh, to this video. Thank you. I'm uh, Evangelical One, by the way. Evangelical One. Thank you. Bye.